Okay, this is a tutorial on scanning and importing a simple drawing into Photoshop and then also simply processing that drawing once it's in Photoshop so that your uh, layers are preserved and also to keep the line drawing nice and uniform uh, without a lot of extra texture and color uh, unless it's desired. So. Uh, the first step is uh, once Photoshop has been installed and the drivers for the scanner have been installed, uh, then you should be able to scan directly out of Photoshop. It can be a little fiddly uh, getting all the proper drivers installed both for Photoshop and the scanner and getting them to work together. Uh, but this is in uh, Macintosh uh, OS 10 version 7, which is the most current version of the Macintosh operating software. It would be very similar in the Windows version of Photoshop and the drivers for the, so for the scanner as well, but uh, for our purposes we're working from the Macintosh. So the first thing we would want to do is uh, in Photoshop you go to File, Import, CanoScan LIDE 200, which is the same scanner that uh, Phil Goodman recommended. He actually recommends the 210, which is the most current version of the same scanner. Um, and with the scanner you can scan directly from Photoshop using the drivers. So you go to uh, CanoScan, File, Import, CanoScan, LIDE 200, and you just click on it. And that will launch the scanning window automatically. And you can see here when the scanning window opens, I have it set to the advanced mode, which uh, is probably the mode that you would want to use because you can configure the settings to be the most appropriate for the material. And the settings that we're going to use for scanning uh, these line drawings is going to be um, color mode is color. Output resolution, I'm going to change that from 300 to 600. And the reason for that is the drawings are fairly small. We want the maximum amount of detail uh, that makes sense. This isn't the maximum scan resolution. If we go over here, uh, you can see that we can choose from 300, 400, 600, 800, 1200. Um, 1200 I think would be overkill given the simplicity of the images that we're scanning here. 300 would be acceptable most of the time, but I think that 600 might be a little more optimal. And uh, getting that we're not going to scan a large area um, you can see this will tell you how big the file will be. If we were to scan the whole page at 600, it would be 102 megabytes, which is an awfully large file for an image. Um, if we were to scan at 300, it would be 25. If we were to scan at 1200, it would be 409. That image would barely fit on a CD. But we're not going to scan the whole page, so we're going to go with 600. And before we decide how much to scan, we're going to preview so we can select the area that we're going to we're going to scan. So I'll hit preview. In preview, uh, it just takes a quick, rough, low res scan of the whole page so that we can see what's there on the page, and it's automatically applied a scan area here. It's not the scan area we're going to use, so we can either uh, we can delete that or we can we can uh, go ahead and just grab the corner of it and change the shape. You see here as I take the cursor and go over the edge here, in the middle here I can move the whole box around, but as I get out to the edge I can change the edges by dragging. And so I'll just grab the corner here and change. Oops, this should let me grab the corner. A little fiddly here and shrink it down to just the image that we want to capture. And actually, because this is black and white, I think I'm going to forego Well, I'll go ahead and leave it in color, actually. That'll be easier. Um, so there, I've got a little box around it that's not too much bigger than the object we're scanning. And I've got everything configured, and I'm just going to go ahead and hit Scan. Because it's not a very big image and this is a new scanner, it's actually going to scan pretty darn fast.
And the great thing about scanning it directly from Photoshop is that once it's done scanning, the scanner window closes, automa window closes automatically, and the image is now ready to be edited directly in Photoshop. We don't have to save the image first and then reopen it from Photoshop or anything like that. We're just ready to go here. And you can see there's the drawing as we zoom in. And I'm going to use the Command Plus key here on the Macintosh to zoom in and take a look. Yeah, it looks pretty, pretty good just as is. Um, depending on how much paper tone we capture on the scan, just a good thing to do probably as a matter of course is uh, cleaning up and just making sure that the black is black and the white is white. And so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go over here, I'm going to click on Layers. You could also find that Layers window by going up here and clicking on the Layers window. But layers, uh, you know, it's like pieces of transparency laying on top of one another. We can have a background layer. We can have a layer with the black and, and uh, drawing in it. We can have a layer with color, you know, if we decide to fill in the image with colors in different places. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to use Command A, which is Select All. You can also find that up here in the uh, Select. All. You can see that's Command A. I think on Windows it might be a Control A. Um, so I'm going to select all, and then I'm going to copy, which is either Command C or Control C in Windows. Copy. And then I'm going to edit, paste, to lay it on top. Now see I've got two layers and they have the same thing on the eyes here and if I click on both and hide both layers you see nothing. If I click on this layer I'm going to select the background layer and I'm going to select all and I'm going to actually hit the delete key and I'm going to fill it with the background color which is white background color. It will bring up this dialog box and now there's nothing in the background. The background is just a white piece of paper basically. So I'm going to click on the eye and bring the drawing back up so now the drawing is laying on top, and the drawing has a white background as well. I'm going to click here to make the, back, the foreground color black. I'm going to edit deselect, or select deselect, which I would usually just use using the command key. Now using the magic wand, I am going to select a little bit of black here. Oops, I was just on the background window. Select. I'm going to select a little bit of black. Um, I'll zoom in here so you can see how the, they call these ants, the little dotted lines that are crawling around the outside of the images I've selected. And to make sure that I've got all of the black, now that I've selected a little bit of the black here, the tolerance is set for 32 by the way, I'm going to do select similar. And that just guarantees that I've selected all of the black uh, area on the page here. And so I've selected all of the drawing. I'm going to actually, to make sure that the drawing is perfectly black all the way around, I'm going to do fill using the foreground color now. And because I've set the foreground color to be black, I will fill this entire area with black. If I had selected a different color for the foreground color, then it would fill the drawing with a different color. And there it goes. Now to make sure that the background is empty, I'm going to select inverse and that's going to select everything everything other than what I currently have selected. And by selecting inverse basically I've selected all of the white area all around here. And now I'm going to hit the delete key and I'm going to delete all of that white. And what that means here is that when I hide the background you can see that what I'm left with is a black wire drawing basically. I'll hit deselect real quick floating on top of an empty image here. And what that means is that if uh, we need to save this uh, as a product logo or something where they don't want a background, um, you know, a person could use this on their website and paste it in and, and everything that's behind the drawing would show up. Um, but now we just have the drawing there. Now I, I've just clicked the background again so we can see it. Now I'm actually going to duplicate this layer so that we have a safety layer. And I'm going to layer 
duplicate layer. And I'm going to call the new layer uh, drawing backup. And there it magically appeared. I'm going to drag it down here so it's behind the first layer. And then I'm going to change the name of the first layer here. That's all. I click in here. Click in again. Sometimes it's a little finicky. I'm going to call this drawing. So what that means now is that I've got two copies of the drawing. I have one on, on the top, and the way that you can see this is that if I click the uh, arrow key up here, I can actually drag this layer now, and you can see how there's actually two. I'll go edit, undo, move, and move it back to where it was. So then I'm just going to go ahead and hide the backup layer. I'm just going to keep that around in case I wreck the original drawing. I don't have to go all the way back. You know, if I'm filling in colors or something like that, I don't have to go back and fill that in. Now, because we have a nice high resolution image, we're ready to go ahead if we want to start. Still a little bit dicey in here in some areas. So, you know, one thing we can consider doing is scanning at 1200 to get rid of that little bit of pixelization. Um, because our image size maybe is, we can change the image size is another thing that we can do. Uh, image size. Um, what we can do here is we can just make the image bigger. We could say we'll make it uh, 10 inches tall. Give us a little more resolution. But actually, some of this this jaggedy edge is really just the effect of the pen on the paper. I'm thinking that some of this jaggedy edge all the way around. There's ways that we can clean up that edge uh, and we can make presets even that will do that for us. Um, and if we convert this drawing into an illustrator image, we can have it be perfectly smooth around all of the lines. But that's probably a lesson for another day. So now that we've got it all ready to go, uh, we've got a background, we have a hidden backup layer, we have the main layer, I'm going to save the whole thing so that we're ready to go forward, and I'm going to go save as, uh, and I'm going to save it to Artworking Scan. It's a good place for me. Uh, and I don't want to save it as a PDF. I want to save it as a PSD, which is a Photoshop document. PSD, Photoshop document. And that'll preserve all these layers and all the changes that we've made. Save. And when we are ready to go ahead, say, say we go ahead and I'll make, I'm going to make a new, uh, uh, say we filled in the color and everything, I'm not going to make a new anything. Say we filled in the color and somebody wants it as a, as a JPEG, uh, to export it as a JPEG, we can do save, let's see, export, save for web and devices is I think what I'm going to use here. And that will bring up a new window then where I can select the file type that I want to save it as. And in this case, I'll save it as a JPEG and I'll decide that I only want it to be a thousand pixels wide because I don't, don't need it to be any bigger than that. And uh, I'm going to zoom out here a little bit so we can see the whole page. There we go. And then I could go ahead and hit save. And it would say, okay, now I could name my file and I would call it drawing. drawing. I think maybe I forgot to name the last one. So there you go. And now that's been exported.